Xin Tian is a prominent figure in traditional Chinese mythology. He is known for his extraordinary fortitude and determination. He is also a Chinese deity representing unyielding resilience in the face of supreme divinity, the major god in Chinese mythology. This indomitable spirit of Xin Tian is illustrated in the story of his decapitation, after which he continues to fight, refusing to accept the defeat. Xin Tian's myth is a typical story representing perseverance and refusing to yield to a higher power no matter the odds. His unceasing struggle, especially after such a significant setback as losing his head, shapes him into the icon of an enduring spirit. This implies that there are no obstacles that are too great to overcome, and that the human spirit can persist and endure through the most challenging circumstances. Xin Tian's tale is not just about how strong and amazingly active in his physical form, but also how he has the strength of will and power of his own determination that make him a symbol of resistance and resilience in the Chinese mythology system. This story is from an ancient Chinese book called Shan Hai Jing. The book is often translated as the classic of mountainous seas. It is an ancient Chinese text that dates back to before the Han Dynasty. It's a compilation of geography and myth, consisting of various accounts of mountains, rivers, seas, islands, animals, and plants, along with descriptions of various mystical creatures and tribes. And now let's turn to the origin and the pivotal events that shaped his legend. Long before the flood, during the ancient times in China, the land was ruled by three tribes: Huang, Yan, and Jiu Li. Emperor Huang established housing and boats. Moreover, he created the lunar calendar of ancient China. Emperor Yan tasted all the herbs on earth and wrote a book about the looking and functions of all sorts of different medicinal herbs. He also taught people how to plant crops and how to make clothes. The emperor of Jiu Li is Chi You, Emperor Yan's son. He is the master of war and invented weapons. The world around China is controlled by these three kingdoms. And Xin Tian is the loyal officer Emperor Yan. Just like the other ancient civilizations, agriculture and farmers set a foundation for the ruling of the emperor. Xin Tian loves music. He composed music to celebrate, even glorify the act of sowing and harvesting. Although his official job is recording the historical events happening in that time, Xin Tian created a song called Fu Li. A poem called Feng Shou, and he collected these poem and songs he created, and some songs that he recorded down from the people in his tribe into one book called Bu Mo. The book was lost, and the original script is no longer visible and readable. The three tribes live in harmony at first, when they are all trying to make the land flourish. But once everything was settled, Emperor Huang started a war because he wanted to take over control from the other two tribes. Emperor Yan and Shi You tried to fight back, but they were defeated. Both Yan and Shi You's tribe are exiled to the south. Xin Tian, even though he's not a warrior, he wanted to get back to the land in the original territory. So he asked his emperor Yan to join Shi You's army when he discovered that Shi You is going to lead a rebellious war against Emperor Huang. But、Emperor Yan refused Xin Tian's proposal to fight with Shi You. Shi You went on a fight with Emperor Huang alone with his followers, but was defeated again. Xin Tian was furious about Shi You's death and disappointed at his master's tame attitude toward losing the land and not trying to get it back at all. He no longer composes music and poetry, and he resigned his position as an officer. He decided to challenge the Emperor Huang on his own. Xin Tian then armored himself into weapons. With an axe in one hand and the shield in the other, he headed up north. On his way, there were people blocking him from going to the emperor, but he managed to win through the battles. He is not only a loyal companion and exhibits talents on in music and poetry composition, he also ha- is a great warrior and fighter. As Xin Tian headed up north and reached Changyang Mountain, he called up Emperor Huang for a duel fight. Huang accepted the challenge, and they started a fight in the mountains. The fight was an intense one, but how can Xin Tian, as a musician and historian, fight over an emperor that was leading wars between tribes? The emperor, the more seasoned fighter, defeated Xin Tian, then beheaded Xin Tian with his sword. Immediately, Xin Tian can't hear or see anything. He tried to fetch his head so he could put it back on before it was too late to do so. 
The emperor eliminated that possibility by splitting up the mountain and let the head fall into the crack, then closing the mountain immediately. Even the attempts to retrieve the head failed. Xin Tian did not die. His two nipples became his eyes, and belly button became his mouth. He started to fight again. However, this time he can't see what's up there anymore. He could only see what's in front of him. So he kept waving his axe and shield above and trying to hit gods in the sky. His body grows into a giant. His nipple eyes could shoot fire, and his belly button mouth could blow wind. And that's the end of his story. Xin Tian, a special character in ancient mythology, had his unique personality shaped by the imperial mindset of feudal society. Xin Tian is loyal to his leader Yan, and he is not only capable of assisting the Emperor Yan to govern his tribe, but also able to fight in the battlefield. His bravery, loyalty, and martial arts skills are idealized version of the ancient emperor's warriors. Xin Tian's spirit comes from the feudal idea of protecting one's leader, like Confucianism teaches people to do so. Over thousands of years of cultural history, this spirit has developed into what it is today. Now he represents a modern meaning that includes both the romance of heroism and a sense of tragicness. The figure and drawing from an ancient Chinese artist and a current Chinese artist has significant differences. In ancient Chinese tale and painting, a standard way to picture Xin Tian is a human-shaped figure without his head, his nipple, his eyes, and his belly, his mouth. He holds an axe on one hand and holding a shield in the other. One poetry phrase about Xin Tian from an old Chinese poet, Yuan Ming Tao, said that Xin Tian waves his axe and his spirits to fight persists, showing that the part of the myth underscores how much resilience that Xin Tian has. It marks his spirit that is never surrendering, regardless of all bad things that have been happened to him. Xin Tian's figure has several significance, more than encouraging and uplifting people to fight and refuse to be tamed. Because Xin Tian's character and appearance is a bit scary and recognizable, because he has no head and his eyes are his chest, his mouth and his belly. In video games, he usually appears as a powerful villain rather than giant god representing good virtues. In modern cartoons, the character of Xin Tian is portrayed quite differently from his fears and scary depiction in ancient myth. For instance, the cartoon Fei Renzai. Xin Tian is seen as a tall guy wearing modern suits, but humorously uses a bra to cover his chest as a sleep mask. To compensate for his lack of head, he cleverly uses a plastic cat from a model from a mall, ensuring his appearance doesn't frighten people, especially the little kids away. When Xin Tian is playing a Chinese version of Avalon with his friends, he plays the blind hunter who gets to kill a person. Xin Tian misunderstood it and actually waved his axe. He was really about to attack. This humorous scene incorporating Xin Tian's original description and what modern people expect him to be like together. This version of Xin Tian is depicted as a loyal friend to his colleagues at the company and is known for taking good care of the people around him. This new way of showing Xin Tian is really different from the old scary version of him. It makes people curious and want to learn more about him. In a cartoon, Fairy and Zai, Xin Tian isn't scary anymore. Instead, he's fun, friendly, and fits right into today's world. This new way of showing him makes him less scary than the old stories. It shows that Xin Tian can be loyal and caring, and also funny in a way that fits today's lifestyle. This change makes Xin Tian a more interesting character that the audience can enjoy and want to know more about. So, what causes the change between the ancient description of and the modern one? I think what causes the changes are the different approaches that people took to interpret Xin Tian's character and the stories that involve. I think what causes the changes are the different approaches that people took to interpret Xin Tian's character and the stories that involved him. The first interpretation is that some scholars in China perceive Xin Tian as a villain rather than a heroic figure. They think that Xin Tian fought to become a god and then lost his life, and yet a monstrous look is a typical villain story. And Xin Tian's action after he was beheaded represented that there are always people in the world that won't accept they are wrong, even when there's proof that they are actually wrong. These scholars believe that Xin Tian's behavior made him become a monster that has never any rebellion against the Tao or the natural order. Another group of scholars believe that Xin Tian is actually a representation of Chinese heroism. It is the origin of the soul of the Chinese nation. 
They believe that Xing Tian reflected a deep-rooted cultural, historical, and spiritual element from the essence of the Chinese national identity. It incorporated traditions, values, beliefs, and historical events that then identifies and defines the character and spiritual of the ideal Chinese person. I think this is the most reasonable and compelling interpretation of Xing Tian related myth. There is an old quote from China that said, 不以成败论英雄 which means do not judge a hero by their success and failure. This quote suggested that the true measurement of a hero should not be based solely on their success and failures, but also on the character, values, and the obstacles that they have been through. There is also a religious part from Xing Tian's myth. According to Joseph Campbell, all myths have a function, and in this case, Xing Tian's myth also has a function. Xing Tian's myth stated some social codes in ancient Chinese societies, like being loyal, having a persistent spirit, etc. Xing Tian got beheaded as a result of not following the emperor's orders. It also proposes the idea that first, there is a chance that human can become a god by their good virtues, and second, that maybe people won't really die when they theoretically died. Xing Tian's myth also shows its connection to some local religious activities. One of the quotes from Xing Tian's myth after he is beheaded said that Xing Tian wu gan qi, which means Xing Tian is waving his axe and shield. This is connected to one of the ancient Chinese sacrificial rites, where there is a skull worshiping ritual. The group of ancient Chinese is recorded to be to build a statue of a headless human when they want to have a good harvest, because the action of beheading Xing Tian is like how people harvest their crops. Then they use ceremonial weapons, just like an axe and shield, in dance all night long as the ritual. Some other scholars believe that the act of beheading is not just a ritual, but a social norm of showing pride and power. The act of beheading is an important ritual in which the winner celebrates his victory. Some of the bronze antiques from Shan Zhou Dynasty of China have human head or face carvings on it. Although bronze ceremonial antiques are common among many other Western societies too, none of them are embedding their bronze antiques so well organized into their right music system, thus becoming a symbol of power and the bedrock of monarchical authority. Some scholars propose that these bronze with human head carvings is a part of the beheading ceremony for their fortune or shown as a power symbol. Overall, Xing Tian's myth transcends its ancient origins, evolved and adapted to resonate with modern audiences. Xing Tian's transformation from a headless warrior, symbolizing relentless struggle and unwavering loyalty in ancient Chinese mind, to the multifaceted character in contemporary media, reflected the dynamic nature of myth interpretation. His story embodied the core of Chinese heroism, rebellion against the Tao, and the complexity of human nature. His story reflects cultural identity and society values. His eternal struggle is not just a tale out of nowhere, but a living narrative that continues to inspire individuals across generations.